This is the August 14th meeting of the Fairfield Town Plan and Zoning Commission. We'll now go into executive session. Uh, the first item on our agenda is bills and communications. We have three sets of meeting minutes. One we've delayed a little bit on from June 26th, June 24th, and June 31st. Since there were different people here on different dates, we'll have to take those up separately. On the minutes from June 26th, um, Mr. Devonchik or Mr. Wendt, are they are they okay now? Did, did anybody are there any proposed changes to them or? Uh, we didn't make any, but um, yeah, I would just say I had a question about the minutes, and I've since discussed it with the planning director and the chairman, and I think we've resolved that, that nothing further needs to be added to those. Minutes. Okay. Okay. So those those minutes from the 26, you should all have them. That they, they were related to the uh, denial of the uh, homeland yeah. street application. You have them with you, Mr. Wagner. Great. Do we have a motion on those minutes? I move to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Souter. Second, second by Commissioner Alessi. Everybody's here gets to vote on everything. There's okay. only six of us here, except if, if you weren't present for something. So it's made by Mr. Souter, seconded by Mr. Alessi. Any discussions on the minutes of June 26th? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor of approving the minutes of June 26th, say aye. 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 Opposed? No one is opposed, no one abstains. It's approved unanimously. Then we have the minutes of June 24th. Um, let's see who we've got there. We've got myself. July 24th. July 24th, sorry. I just want to make sure we, I think everybody here was, was at the end of that meeting, so we're okay, all six of us can vote. Um, does anybody, do we have a motion on the minutes of July 24th? Move to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Jacobson, second, second. by Commissioner Parker. Any discussion on the minutes of July 24th? Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It's approved unanimously, the minutes of July 24th. And finally, we have the minutes of July 31st. Um, here, Mr. Wagner wouldn't probably sit on this since he wasn't in attendance. Uh, yes. Do we have a motion on the minutes from July 31st? Motion to approve by Commissioner Lessie, second by uh, Commissioner Souter Jacobson. Jacobson. I Jacobson. Jacobson. It. Sorry. Your hands got up at the same time. Just above C and now. <laughs> yeah. I'll third it. I defer to Mike. Any discussion oh. of the minutes of July 31st? Ready to vote? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Those are approved unanimously. Um, before our next item, I understand that there, um, I would entertain a motion to go into executive, closed executive session to discuss uh, pending litigation. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Wagner, second by Commissioner Jacobs. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We'll now, I'm sorry for the public, we're just going to go into closed executive session. We'll try to be quick tonight um, to discuss the pending litigation. And then we'll come out and we'll take the rest of our agenda in its order. Can I have a motion to return to executive session? So moved. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Jacobs, second by Mr. Alessi. Any discussion? All in favor of coming out of closed executive session into executive session, say aye. 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 Opposed? No one's opposed. Okay. We're returning from closed executive session. No motions were made and no votes were taken. The next item on our agenda, I'm going to have to read this, is 130 Fairchild Avenue. Proposed settlement of litigation between the Town Plan and Zoning Commission and Garden Homes Management, whereby Garden Homes will withdraw the portion of its application involving a regulation amendment to sections 10.6.13, 10.7.1, 10.10.10, 10.17.3, and the zone change application, application to establish a design residence district on land presently zoned Residence B and the Town Planning and Zoning Commission will approve the site plan to allow the construction of 54-unit residential development, including 27 units of affordable housing pursuant to the applicant's affordability plan. The Commission will offer the opportunity for public comment on this proposed settlement. Um, okay, uh, we talked, the, uh, the item before us is whether we would vote to recommend the Town Attorney pursue um, the settlement that was discussed at the pre-trial meeting and uh, which is outlined here in our uh, agenda. Do we have a motion? The motion would be to accept, to recommend acceptance of this proposed settlement. Make a motion. Motion by Mr. Alessi, second by Commissioner Jacobs. Um, 
it, actually, we have eight people now, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. No. The two alternates are Jerry and Sally. Jerry and Sally, Sally right? Yeah. It should be because I don't think you actually were on the commission when we actually heard this, Commissioner Daly. So um, it'll be Jerry and Sally on this one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, there's seven of us. Any discussion? No. Okay. Um, I offer the public the opportunity to comment on this. It's, uh, it involves, as I said, it's a settlement of a 54-unit uh, affordable housing application uh, in the terms that I described. Anyone wish to comment on this? Any member of the public? No? Hearing none? Anything else from the commission? No public comment. There's no public comment. Nobody stepped up to comment. <clears throat> it, it was properly noticed it's been in our agenda so what else are we ready to vote again the vote the vote and the affirmative vote is to recommend the town attorney pursue the settlement as outlined in the agenda all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed no Ms. commissioner parker is a no a no the other six members voted for it six to one in favor of recommending the proposed settlement aren't you going to no. no, no, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, now for the for the remainder of the agenda to get to seven, the only one that's not sitting is Commissioner Neely. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So we're we're good for the for the executive session. Okay. The next item is 808 Post Road, request of Attorney James White for reconsideration of a condition of approval granted July 24th, 2012, with respect to outdoor dining. Um, does the staff have comment on this? We don't. You have the letter uh, I, from, from Mr. White. We discussed this with, with the chair, and they anticipated a, uh, an opportunity to have a, a dialogue um, to discuss the reasons why you felt um, this condition was imposed and their reason why uh, they think it ought to be reconsidered. We have a letter in our packet about this? You do. It was, it was not. It was email. It, it was, was the email. one that I emailed. Yeah. Email to you, scan an email to uh, okay. in the aftermath of the package. Is the commission okay with this? We don't we don't usually let people address us during the uh, executive session, but the whole purpose of the bill and communication is that they request the opportunity to address us. So sure. um, sometimes we actually put compliance applications to public hearings, so it's not without precedent. Everybody's okay with that? Yep. yep. I trust your Mr. Attorney White. This is an executive public. session. It's public. It's a public executive. It's not a closed executive session. It's a public. During an executive session here, we normally discuss things among ourselves. We don't let applicants address us, or there's no pros and cons. But hearing as the bill in communication was you asking us to reconsider, we'd like you to present to us why we should reconsider yeah. that. Okay. Uh, I'd like to. Uh, you have several. Or just pass them around. Okay. Why don't we start it down at that end? Then? Is that okay. So we all get to see them. I'm attorney James White. I'm from the law firm of Pullman and Comley, and um, I represented um, Wheel Associates, which owes, owns 808 Main, uh, 808 Post Road, and Sunny Days when uh, they applied for the zoning uh, variance and were granted that. They subsequently uh, did uh, some improvements to the property. They installed the railing uh, and uh, uh, came in to. Uh, apply, they applied on their own for the certificate of zoning compliance, and I think there there was some. Uh, uh, well, they didn't go to the meeting because they didn't think they could speak at the meeting. They could, yeah. And I guess that's uh, that's that's the reason we came back here. Uh, we we in the in the ZBA uh, public meeting we went into safety was one. There were two things we wanted here. Uh, Sunny days wanted to have outdoor seating. Uh, and, and some of the ZBA stuff is in your file. Uh, for the convenience of customers, for the, it, it, it's, it's being done all over Fairfield and in other towns. Uh, Sunny Days has another uh, store up at Black Rock Turnpike. They have a store uh, in Westport and in Stanford. They have outdoor seating in all of their stores except uh, Trumbull, uh, which doesn't have any rules for that. Uh, so it's something that they do for the convenience of the, of the patrons. But in this case, uh, as we stated with CBA and discussed with them, uh, there, there is a safety factor here. Uh, and, um, uh, the safety factor, which is in some of those materials from ZBA, is the fact that people cannot 
uh, come into and out of the store, and they basically have three things they can do when they come to buy the ice cream. They can stay in the store, uh, inside in the patron area, and they can consume their products, or they can sit in there. There's a couple of tables and chairs in there. Or they can come out of the store, go to their cars, get in the car, go home. Or they can sit in the car and consume the products. The third thing they can do is come, come out of the store and hang around. Uh, there's, there's, there's tailgating, uh, and there's one, what I call wandering around the parking lot. So there was, and that, that, that results in uh, some trash uh, issues in the parking lot also, in addition to safety. Now, they've never had an accident, but, the, but the, one of the goals here was to get outdoor seating as an amenity uh, to this. Uh, and, but, but, the, uh, but, but the, uh, one of the offshoots of it, of it is an improvement in, uh, in, in the safety features of the property. So they came here, and um, uh, you issued your, um, uh, deci your decision with the conditions of approval, all of which they're complying with. Uh, and uh, they have not put any tables and chairs out outside, but they want to. Uh, well, so just a second. Yeah. The day we got your letter yes. saying they're complying completely, I went there and shot a picture of people sitting at the we tables in front. Outside? Outside. Yeah. Yes. We have a picture. We have a picture. Right. We don't. We don't need a. We don't. You know what? We don't need a public argument. You're represented by counsel. Even this is a, a concession to the commission. We don't want anybody yelling things out. No. Um, well, just ask staff about that because yeah. there could have been some difference between the time it was no, they were notified of the denial and when they did this. So the, the day I, there was no intention to violate. Right. The, the, just to, for clarification, the day that Rich uh, Jacobs took that picture, I think it was a Sunday. Correct. It was a. Thursday night. The day we got the letter by okay. email. Okay. All right. Thursday. They did not receive notice of the conditions until Friday of that week. I did not was not able to talk to Mr. White or any representative from the, until Monday the following week. As of that day, after that weekend, there had not we have not and we've checked it. There has not been tables and chairs there. So for that gap, gap the day the Thursday you saw and the weekend there was some tables. It was before they had contacted the office and I was at an opportunity to talk to him. They did not, re again, they did not receive the notice of decision until Friday. Right. Uh, but it was after we received the letter from, from the attorney. Everybody used, it, yeah. was, it was after we received his letter, the attorney's letter. Right. Well, I, all so I can tell you is since, I've talked, us, since I've talked to him, there has not been any tables and chairs. Okay. okay. Yeah. Was this the other thing. If the chairs, if the tables and chairs were out there, they were, he was, he, he had tables and chairs out there without the approval from us. He had applied for approval to have outdoor seating. That, if, if I'm understanding these facts correctly, he was waiting to hear the decision on that application. And in the meantime, he had the tables and chairs out there. So it, it just, it's not a good set of facts any way you look at it. But the fact is, now they're removed. He understands that we granted some outdoor seating. And what the record, I think, clearly shows is that we had concerns over the seating in the front part of the building because of the parking spaces and the parking lot there. The record is also really clear that we wanted to accommodate this request. We fashioned some conditions which would allow some outdoor seating on the side and to see how that went for this season. And we made it clear on the record that if that went well, we would be very happy to entertain a follow-on application next year for an expansion of that to the front. Well, I, I think that um, we, we didn't know what uh, you had, you know, what your considerations were. We thought you didn't have what we had told ZBA. And that's really all I want to do is indicate what we told ZBA. And we've taken some measures since that meeting to what we hope is even more address the safety issues. Uh, I mean, I mean what, Sunny what Days, I how say, long has Sunny Days been in, in that location? Since 2003. So it's been a long time. It's not like this is a new issue that just came up with the people wanting a place to go to eat their ice cream and people perhaps, uh, um, you know, uh, standing in front or on the side or in the parking lot. Uh, so to, to, to some extent, you're, you're making this seem like this is 
you know, has to happen today because it's a, it's a, a pressing issue. But it's been there for eight plus years. And now they came in with an application. They came in with a plan. We all considered it very carefully. We actually debated this for quite some time. And we placed on the record very clear indication of our concerns. And we wanted to accommodate the request. We made some allowance for the outdoor seating. We made it clear that we, we would welcome the opportunity to, to reconsider a, a, an expanded plan when we see that it, it actually works well. What works well? How about uh, the outdoor seating. Right. Well, the outdoor seating that, that, you, that you allowed was over it on the side, on the North Benson That's side. That's correct. Okay, so for people to get there, they're gonna come out of the <coughs> store, they're gonna walk down what I'll call the aisles, which are protected. There's no seating there. There is a sidewalk. They walk yeah. out the front yeah. door, they walk they along walk the, sidewalk, the sidewalk, and they go yeah. along the and to the table. Per First of all, we didn't really know what the difference between having people stand in those in the sidewalk or be in the sidewalk and not be able to sit down as a convenience was. Uh, we we didn't see that difference. Right. I I think you could just I don't I don't yeah. I think you could just make your point about why we should reconsider it, Mr. Okay. White. I think I think one of the points you've made is that people are standing in the parking lot and this would increase safety. Yeah, I think well, you're entitled to make your points and then we could decide whether we want to reconsider it or not. That's, that's, that's fair, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. That's, that's really. I, that's I really yeah. Point. I don't do all. The, if you presented evidence to ZBA, you think we should hear like there was you know safety issues with people standing in the parking lot? Please please you know. Let us know that and, and why we should reconsider. But what Mr. Commissioner Lessing and Commissioner Wagner pointed out, our conditions of approval were pretty specific. We wanted to accommodate it. It's, it's not like we didn't want. There was some concerns about allowing those tables in front. So if you could tell us why we should reconsider allowing those tables in front now, that's really the, the uh, issue. I think we, 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 the reason we think you should reconsider is because we don't think there's a safety issue. And even if there was one, we, we, we propose this to address it. In other words, the railing, the, uh, this, this area that's a buffer. If you went to this store six months ago, came out the door, there was a small uh, buffer area there. There were some plants and things. And you were in the parking lot. And the parking spaces were up. Uh, the first spaces were there. So what we've done is we've moved those spaces out, first of all, for the side, sidewalk, if you will, uh, four, uh, five feet, four inches. Now, since this, uh, you know, since your uh, uh, decision, uh, and it's shown by this picture, we've added another four feet of buffer uh, on the other side of the sidewalk, and we've moved the spaces uh, out that much because right. there was some slippage there. Because because what's what's presented in this picture is not what was presented in the application that we considered. That's true. The application that we considered had those parallel parking spaces literally six inches away from the sidewalk where those tables for children to sit at would be placed. And there was no railing, there were no pylons, there was nothing. And our debate that night was about what we could suggest that the applicant could do in order to accommodate safety concerns. And so, you know, frankly, we split the baby and we said, we suggested that we place concrete, uh, um, you know, pylons, uh, uh, pylons on, the, on the side with the handicapped spaces mm -hmm. so that we could accommodate the request because it was, we wanted to, for y your, your client to have some outdoor seating. Uh, and, and we didn't see, we didn't arrive at that night a, a way to suggest for the front, particularly considering that the parking spaces were literally six inches away from where those tables were supposed to be be placed. You can speak at this. So, so understood. So yeah. the, my my point in in going through this all is that you know this is something different. And if and if your client wants Never to again. submit a revised <laughs> a, a, a new application for this seating with a with a site plan that shows this new buffer and the restriping of the parking lot and right the railing and something like that, then you know, I mean, that might be something that they want they would want to consider. You want to speak fine. I mean, well, I, now you can see why we don't allow applicants to address this. I really, you know, this is going on too. I really just want to hear from you why we should reconsider. I mean, those are some good points you guys have made, but uh, in the end, we're going to vote whether to reconsider or not. Okay. We may not vote at all on well, it. I just want to hear from you, Mr. White, what else, you want, what else you want us to consider? Well, I, I want you to consider the fact that the idea that we had for doing this, mm -hmm. convenience of customers, fine. Uh, but there was a safety factor, and that was people tailgating, people wandering, 
and there was a closeness there now we did not intend at that time to put the crosswalk which we're showing now but we did intend and it was part of the whole thing it's on the site plan to put the rail in in other words to create the first five feet but the but the uh, but but one of the ways to keep them out of the parking lot was to put the tables and chairs in there so people would sit there instead of going around uh, in, in the parking lot. Okay, you have comments, and then we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. We have a lot of things on our agenda, and this is a reconsideration. Go ahead, Commissioner Neely, then Commissioner Lessy, then I'll offer Mr. White any other further opportunity to comment, and then we're stopping this thing. Use the microphone. Where, you have to use the microphone. That to me is that you find that most accidents occur with people pulling into liquor stores and pulling straight ahead. That's where most of the accidents occur and have through the years uh, in front of stores. But we're here in the front of the store. Parking is is parallel to the door. So there, and people are not <coughs> pulling in there. So I would okay. think it would be a, a safer place okay. to put that's seating. Okay. That's my comment. And we've never had any accidents or anything like that in okay. either of those right. places. This, this Mr. Barrett's. Sense. Yes, Commissioner Alessi. This was not what we presented to Mr. White, but we, when we no, proposed the application, this is not what we had. No. And the reason why it was shot down on front, I'll tell you, is very simple. We were concerned of a car going through that fence, parked right against it. That was basically it. It had to come out this way, and there were going to be kids sitting at that table. The reason why we approved it on the, on the side was because you had the parking stops. Right. Basically, that was it. So I mean, this is a much different plan that we were presented to. Parallel parking can't. It's not a plan, it's a photo. A photo. Right. All right. But parallel parking, three inches from the fence with some someone trying to back out of the parking spot okay. causes the front to change. That was our thing. And hitting okay. the fence. And, and hitting the fence. Zone. But now we've, we've expanded the You've buffer. You've changed it, yes. Okay. So you're saying that we have to apply for a new I'm not so sure what we're saying. We gave you an opportunity to address us, which we never do and may never do again. <laughs> <laughs> we have we're people waiting on many other applications. We're just Mr. White, to, do you have uh, anything uh, else pursue, to say in pursuit of commerce yeah. Yeah. With, with the least expense Thank to you, everybody? Okay. Okay, we've been present. Thank you, Mr. White. You Thank may you. sit down. Okay. Um, does anybody have any motions to take any action on what we've been presenting? Yes, I do. Mr. Souter, yes. I move to reconsider the application. Mr. Souter moved to re has moved to reconsider. Is I second, second it. It's second by Mr. Alessi. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, Commissioner Neely, you're actually not on this during the public comment, so it's seven of us. I can public comment, but I can't vote. You can, yeah, that was the option that you could talk during a public hearing because you might be voting on a particular application. That was kind of a strange thing. But you can't, you can't comment now or vote. It's an executive session. We only add to seven, so I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Okay. Who, does anybody have any comments? Yes, Mr. Souter. Yes. Um, of course, my initial uh, con concern with the application, the prior application, was the safety factor of the cars being close proximity to the tables. Uh, and that was because uh, at least one of the parking spaces seemed to me to be only one foot from the railings, which themselves were not physical barriers, they were visual barriers. Um, however, the applicant has since uh, changed the uh, striping there and created what he says is a four foot barrier. It looks probably like three feet to me, but I'll, I'll grant that it may be four. And it seems to me that that's enough clearance for a car bumper to get by and still leave a, a substantial margin between the car and the railing. So I think uh, we could uh, uh, actually uh, grant approval to that front porch. Based on this photo? Based on that photograph. Okay. Anybody but else? I've actually I visited the site. I've seen the actual striping. Okay, thanks. Mr. Wagner? Well, that's my question, is what are the requirements for the, for the approval of an outdoor seating plan? Do we, do we need them to file a revised plan? No. What you can do here is, um, which is basically the request, is amend your condition number one. And I've basically would recommend that you do that if you feel this adjustment addresses your concerns that that would be the adjustment to that first condition that in fact the you could state that the establishment of this additional space between the fencing and the parking area has alleviated that issue and therefore that original condition is no longer uh, is valid but I mean that you can basically act to amend that first condition and include this improvement 
So my only other question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just to answer, all the other conditions of approval that are listed along with the requirements we always have for um, outdoor seating still stay. This is only for a year. It's a seasonal day. Like all the other outdoor seating, it would be re-reviewed next year for recertification. But that's basically what you're doing is just amending that first condition. Anyone else have comments on this? So my, my only other question okay. then would... Then, then the Commissioner so, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, the Commissioner Wagner and then the Commissioner Park. That's all I'm saying. Would, would be, that, you know, there, there was some conversation when we considered this the last time about whether there should be some sort of uh, bumper or uh, a pylon or, I don't know, one of those uh, cylinders that sort of comes out of the ground that prevents a car from, you know, turning in. Look, this buffer is a, a lot better okay then it was a car can actually make the radius turn to pull into the parallel parking there alongside the front without coming into interference with the fence so I just put it out there for discussion as to whether we might consider uh, some sort of pylon in addition to the fence well, the, the condition had that the handicapped spaces must be provided with wheel stops you asking another condition near the fence on the other side on the, on the, on the front of the area should, it, it's everything's public. Commissioner Parker, you're next yeah, to speak. Yeah, I think it's probably related to this. My question uh, to staff and to my fellow commissioners would be when we approve uh, something like tomato and basil, you have to use your microphone. Oh, we really want to go quicker here. Yeah. Uh, well, Everybody. they have these giant pylons that would prevent a car from running into the space. And here we're faced with a very thin, I mean, is there a standard to be met by any safety department? No. I mean, that's a big difference. No. There's no particular standard. We could add a standard but there, someday, but there's none just right okay. now. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments on this application? Reconsider to get rid of, amend commission one to allow the dining in the, the tables in the front with the uh, striping as provided. Anybody else wish to comment? No? Any other comments? Mr. Commissioner Alessi, you have any other comments? Mr. Chairman, just, yeah. I'm yes, sorry, Mr. Devonshire. what you would be asking for is a, if in fact you did a, a amend that, is for a revised site plan. So we would, we, yeah. as part of your condition, we need a revised site, site, revised site plan in indicating what's been talked right. about. Today. The only addition I would have to curb stop along the front fence, parallel to the front fence. Is there a curb stop there now? The front? Yeah. Yes. No. no, just a railing. Okay. That's the only thing I would recommend. I think that'll you know, be more than sufficient. To stop what, a, what about the railroad ties? Would that also work? <laughs> railroad tie, concrete planter, yeah, anything you know, to stop. I don't think the fence is going to stop. Some, some, some barrier. Some, some, some physical barrier. Sort of little barrier, yeah. Okay. I think okay. if they came back okay, with a size plan, it'd be fine. So the, so the motion is that we need a revised plan is an additional condition of approval because we do need to see that yes, yes. as depicted. The photo is not quite enough. So that was a good point, Mr. Wagner, and that we uh, amend the uh, condition one to allow it in the front and that there be some sort of, I don't know, some sort of uh, wheel, stop. Wheel, stop wheel stop in the front. Some, some. Along the uh, fence, bottom right. fence. Yeah. Okay. We all understand that? Mm -hmm. The motion has been made, seconded, condition has been agreed to. Are we ready to vote? to uh, uh, amend our conditions of approval. An affirmative vote is that we amend condition one and add the new condition for a revised site plan. Are we ready to vote? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? It's uh, granted. Okay, next item on our agenda. New applications to recommend to public hearing. 1262 Post Road, special permit of 1262 Post Road pertaining to the renovation and construction of a retail bid building. This is conversion of a post office building in the center design district. Anything to say about that? Mr. No, it's a special permit to uh, add on to and renovate uh, what is the post office building and the retail requires a public hearing. Okay. We have a motion? Motion to move to public hearing. Motion by Mr. Wagner, second by Commissioner Parker, Jacob Parker. Any discussion? All in favor of moving it to public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Let's move to public hearing. Uh, the next item is 1460 to 1462 Post Road Compliance Application of Attorney James Walsh on behalf of 1460 Post LLC to permit second floor, second floor outdoor dining patio with request for reduced parking in the Center Design District. This is uh, the property on the corner of Post and Sanford Street, formerly occupied by Las Vitas. We've had a couple of applications here, one of which 
uh, the possibility of, of the second floor patio was discussed. They're making an application for your consideration in that regard. It will require a request for reduced parking, and because it does so, it does require a public hearing. Right, and there's been other applications denied by the ZBA on this. There was a mm -hmm. different application that we heard. Um, Correct. For making the second floor storage. Correct. Now they want an outdoor dining patio, which I Correct. think was denied by the ZBA. That's correct. We still have to hear this, or should we hear? I mean, there's litigation on this. Well, the litigation doesn't have to do with outdoor dining. The litigation has to do with the, the second floor addition that was approved. Okay. It doesn't include. Okay, so there's outdoor. There's another so it's, variation. It's a okay. different application. Okay. Do we have a motion? To move motion, to public public hearing. Hearing. motion by Mr. Wagner, second by Mr. Alessi. Any discussion? All in favor of moving to public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? No one is opposed. It's unanimous. We move to public hearing. Now we have old business for people that have been pa waiting patiently. We have uh, 85 Mill Plain Road, application of Fischel Properties to establish an indoor recreational facility boxing in a portion of an existing building with a request for reduced parking. We heard this on the 24th. Um, again, I think everybody was here, so everybody votes, again, with the exception of Commissioner Neely. Anything on this? Want to refresh our memories about this? Or? This is uh, the Sportsplex uh, property on uh, Mill Plain Road, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, this particular user is uh, about a 4,600 square foot space um, in line with others uh, on the property. This will be a, a boxing fitness use. What they're requesting is for you to consider the three per thousand three parking spaces per thousand ratio that has been applied to other uh, tenants in the building and seems to be uh, working out adequately. There hasn't been proven to be a, a shortfall uh, parking at any point with uh, given their percentage of occupancy at this stage of the game. Okay. So what, what it is a permitted use in the exception you're, uh, they're looking for is for you to allow four, I'm sorry, three spaces per thousand square feet consistent with other uses that you've approved in the building. Thank you. Do we have a motion on this item? Motion approved by Commissioner Jacobs, second by Commissioner Parker. Any discussion on this yes. use? Yes, Commissioner Jacobson. I just have a question for staff. Now, I think all of these uses are terrific, but I think right now they're down to no parking spaces for any future applicants. Are they going to present, like, are they going to do a study to see if this is working or? Yeah, they, they have depending on your action on the next application, but assuming uh, that meets a favorable result, they will have about 9,500 square feet left in the building right. that's to be leased. Um, so obviously any new use going in there is gonna need consideration for recalibrating some of the parking. Some of the earlier users in the building, uh, or the, some of the first tenants in, didn't necessarily have adjustments made to their parking. But with the vast majority of the space now occupied, they're in a position to do, you know, a census of what their actual usages are and be able to, upon subsequent applications, be able to let you know where they stand. Great. So I guess the short answer to that question would be yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? All into yes. the microphone again, everybody. Yes. Mr. Wagner. Thank you. So I would ask that the... Uh, motion be modified um, slightly. There was a representation by the applicant, um, which I appreciated that uh, there would be, that, 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 the, um, uh, that the activities are indeed limited to boxing and fitness and that there would be no cage fighting that, uh, uh, on, uh, <laughs> at the premises. And um, I, I'm, this is growing out of uh, the um, allocation on the plan for a ring of some sort that was not um, so I, I would condition, make it a condition of approval that there be no cage fighting. The, the only comment I would make is I don't know that we have the authority to enforce that. I mean, it's not an illegal use. I don't know. No, but if, if, it, if, if there was, it would be a use that would extend beyond our uh, uh, special exception approval. Well, it's not a special exception application. It's only compliance. It's a permitted use. They're looking for the exception. Right. The use the is park. recreation. So Sorry, it's, it's I, I, even I, boxing is just a we, form of recreation. Right. But you're, Where you're straying, Matt, is we don't have a specific criteria for different types of boxing. So I don't know but, how you, we make that call in an enforcement state. If, they, if someone went in there and kicked somebody, is no, that a zoning violation? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> 
We could put it in as a condition, but right, the, the you, actually approval. boxing isn't a permitted use. Recreation is, so. Yeah. No, I, I understand, but they're, they're, it, it's a very different well, I, I know. I'm familiar with the, I'm familiar with it. Activity. I just don't know if it's a zoning enforcement issue, but. Well. If we don't say no, then they could do it. I mean, that's. So, I, 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 th I think that uh, condition of approval that the uh, use is limited to boxing and yeah. not any form of cage fighting. Yeah, I think we could put it in. I don't, I don't know how we enforce it, but I think I think it's I think the applicant recognized that and they stated it yep. that it wouldn't be. So I don't think I don't think it hurts because if it doesn't go in, then. Is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Generally, modify it. Okay. Any other comments on this application? It's a reduced parking, three per thousand is what we've been doing on the last set of applications, and it seems to have worked out okay. If they, you know, now that they've got a lot of experience, they can actually come back with experience when these applications started. It was new. We're trying to see how it worked. And now it's almost fully um, built out. Any other comments? Are we ready to vote on this? This is to uh, establish the indoor recreational facility boxing, subject to condition that the use be limited to boxing and not cage fighting. <laughs> I trust the staff to come up with the appropriate. Anything else? Are we ready to vote? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No one is opposed. It's approved unanimously. The next application is old business, 85 Mill Plain Road, application of Fischel Properties to establish two enrichment uses with request for reduced parking. Um, same seven members were here at that time. This is These are two smaller uses. Uh, one is a, a use you're familiar with. It's currently located on uh, Fairfield Woods Road. Is the Young Artist Studio at 1,200 square feet. The other is a, an Enobi Learning Center, which is um, kind of a tutoring um, type learning, critical thinking type um, program that does have some element uh, of, of exercise. While they are also looking for the same three per thousand square foot calculation for parking here, um, the unique thing about this application is it's not necessarily uh, putting a square peg in a square hole here. Um, these enrichment uses aren't necessarily specifically um, spelled out, but um, there was some discussion in a generic kind of a request for information that this commission considered some time ago that, um, yeah, we wouldn't, ought to, you know, say it's not necessarily not permitted, but we need more information about the particular uses. So uh, their argument here is they're kind of complementary to the um, physical uses that are going on there and is uh, a learning activity uh, with some element of physicality, uh, not necessarily a traditional indoor recreational facility, but still a form of recreation to some degree. So um, they're asking for your discretion in calling these uh, enrichment uses. Yeah, potentially, if not, if, if you don't consider them a, uh, a permitted use, but certainly as an accessory use to the uh, vast majority of the space, which is clearly a permitted use. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Wagner, second by Commissioner Jacobs. Any discussion? Yes, Commissioner Jacobs. Um, while in the past when they first started with their um, proposals, I was real critical on the parking. They seem to be working with the parking fairly well. They have an overflow lot that's not being used hardly at all at this point. And these uses, I think, will um, uh, fit very well with the uses that they have at the present time. So uh, I think this is a, a good proposal for us to um, uh, you know, give to uh, approve. Any other comments on this application? No? Good. Are we ready to vote? All in favor of 85 Mill Plain Road application of fiscal properties to establish two enrichment uses with request for produced parking, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No one is opposed. It's approved unanimously. Next item on our agenda is two items which we would take together, 5545 Park Avenue, zone change application of St. Vincent's Medical Center for a two-story office medical building, and 55 Park Avenue, special permit application of St. Vincent's Medical Center for a two-story office building. So there's a special permit and a zone change. Um, when looking at the members present there last week, 
Uh, there were seven. However, Mr. LeClaire and Mr. Kennelly are not, there were eight, but Mr. LeClaire and Mr. Kennelly are not here, leaving us with six. And Mr. Wagner and Commissioner Neely did not listen to the tapes. You did listen to the tapes, no. So we have six. So we could have a motion to uh, table this because we will probably have, we'll probably I would expect Mr. LeClaire and Mr. Kennelly to be at the next meeting. Plus, it would afford people, mem members, a chance to listen to the tapes. I'd also point out, this is actually, if you watch it on Fair TV, that actually qualifies as listening to the tapes. It's just you have to see a recording of the thing. I th actually think it's better. So Fair TV actually does legally count as listening to the tapes. Um, so we could either table this to another meeting or we could act on it. I can't decide that myself, so I need a motion. Um, I'd like to move to table it to the uh, next meeting available. I'll second. Okay. It's been made, moved to table by Commissioner Jacobs, second by Commissioner Souter. Any discussion on the move to table it? No. All in favor of tabling it, say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Matters uh, C and D under old business are both tabled. We have a little time left. <laughs> Or not, but we're okay. I'll try it. We're okay. We're yeah, we're, we should be fine with the public hearing. Apologize to the public that's been waiting. Just trying to get through the agenda here. Um, next, we have a compliance application. Another continuation. 620 Villa Avenue application of Brian Lafo. Uh, sorry about that. For a revised site plan, sign plan in a design commercial district. Okay. Um, I sent you via email today some revised plans. I have them printed here. If anybody doesn't have them, uh, we can pass these down. Yeah. The application here is really to um, approve a new set of wall signs for what was the Villa Avenue car wash uh, with two new sets of channel letters uh, for Russell Speeder's car wash. The majority of the discussion last time centered around the um, the rebranding, if you will, of the existing pole sign that's on the property. There was some concern, if you look at option one, which was the original uh, application that you looked at, it was up at the top where it said Villa Avenue, there's a 699 uh, price box, and then the Russell Speeders. Both th th that application contemplated just simply refacing the existing boxes. Um, if you look at option two, um, they are also planning to utilize the same pole system, the same boxes, but kind of change, reverse their orientation to bring that smaller box down below so that the price isn't standing up in the air, uh, which seemed to be um, one of the main um, issues uh, of discussion last time. The third option um, is larger kind of taking, it would be a new box basically with cladding around the poles um, but I would not recommend this option because this sign would be, it's, it would be a new cabinet and it would be larger than what the regulations currently permit. And option one and option two, while still larger than the current regulation proposal, uh, they're utilizing what's there presently. So um, I would recommend to you either option one or option two should you see fit to be inclined to improve one of those. But the other piece of the sign package remains the same is a replacement of the of, of the wall signs. So if there are any other questions, I'd be, or if there are any questions, I'll be yeah, happy to. Go ahead, Mr. Suter. I have a question for Mr. Wendt. Um, is there anything in our regulations which prohibits placing the price of a product on a sign? No. Okay. I couldn't find it, so I, but I wasn't sure. Do they have any proposals without the price on the sign? No. No, but in your letter, there, there, there is an explanation. Well, maybe it's not. Maybe it was what. You know, it's not uncommon. I mean, gas station pole signs have prices on them. Um, so. I'm not sure what the motion will be with three options, but we need, a, we need some sort of a motion to discuss it. I don't know if somebody wants to make a motion and pick one of the options, or just motion to approve an app, the application. I'll move that we uh, approve one of the three. Uh, options. Okay. <laughs> and the condition will be later. Which well, one? Okay. I'll make Great. a motion Thank that you. we approve number two. Number okay, two. Okay. Well, we just, why don't you second his motion? Okay. okay. We can second. We can. We can, we can discuss. discuss. Yes. Then we at least we can discuss it. Okay. okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so we'd like to start off, Mr. Souter. Uh, I just have a personal preference for number two. I like the uh, price below the signage itself. I think the most important thing is the name of the business and the address and the prices secondary. Thank you. 
Anyone else? Mr. Jacobs? Yeah. Well, I'm not thrilled with any of them. Two is the least, of, least objectionable in my eyes. Commissioner Parker, you have already, already indicated a preference for number two. Option two. <laughs> okay. Commissioner Jacobson? I definitely prefer option two. I think that's the least, uh, I don't know. I don't like, it's option two. I prefer option two. I don't like any of them. I'm not voting for any of them. That's fair, that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's, okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, I move that we approve option two. Okay. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on this? No, it's to, to approve option two. Are we ready to vote? All in favor of approving option two, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. No. Commissioner Lessie is in opposition. It's approved six to one. The next item is 1215 Post Road application of Molto Wine Bar to reestablish an outdoor dining area. Premises in the center design district. I will say on this one, we got a, a letter in our packet um, from Attorney Walsh. I personally thought that was very descriptive of his case, but I mean, the staff can, if, if there's anything you want to brief, I thought, I thought if you've read the letter, Said everything. I don't know if Attorney wants to take. Is asking for the opportunity to address us. Um, Only if you have any questions, you need clarify. Right. We uh, we don't have anything uh, additional other than what you said. Right. So if everybody read the letter, Mr. Walsh, do you have anything to add to your letter? Which well, as I, long as everyone's read it. Otherwise, I was going to summarize it once again. I don't want to waste the, the commission's time. I also have several other things I'd like to present to the commission just in support of this, if you don't mind. Okay. That have just become available yep. and were not available when I submitted my application. Right. Um, so I don't know if you want me to introduce all three of them at the same time. Yeah, you might sure. as well, because this okay. is, I mean, the difference between this and the sunny days when we hear that was to reconsider, you're looking, this is a new application to establish a, a, sure. a dining area that was yep. revoked recently. Yeah. Um, one is, and I think that uh, from speaking to Mr. Went maybe in the file i just want to make sure everybody has it if not i have a copy for everyone um which is a letter from mark barnhart on behalf from the department of community and economic development of the town of fairfield uh supporting the approval of this application uh and i have copies of it if, if anybody needs it did everybody get it was we passed around it. Yeah. does anybody not have it we want to make sure everybody has the evidence everybody has it you don't need an extra copy from mr no, went yes. mr wall sorry I have you need an extra. I think we're okay. We're just, okay, so we, that is in the record, Mr. Walsh. Okay. One that you do not have that just came in late today was a letter from Brickwalk Associates LLC, which is the landlord of this property. Um, and the two principals of that are uh, Mr. Uh, Ken Kleban and, and his father, as you're probably familiar from being before you. And they've written a letter in support of this application, which I'd like to pass out and put a copy in the file, but if you don't mind, um, either I'll read it into the record, or if you, if you want to take some time to read it. Um, How long but, is it? Uh, it's about a page and a half. I can summarize it if you want. Summarize is good. Sure. Is everybody, I'll, I'll, give it, I'll give everybody a copy first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can just. Yeah. That's for good. Letter is signed, dated today, and signed by Ken Kleban on behalf of Brickwalk Associates LLC. Uh, basically, what the letter says, if you are reading it, is that um, the Klebans, uh as the owners, know about uh, the problem that happened and, and your enforcement action. Um, they've had um, some significant conversations over the last three weeks since your last meeting, uh, where they've had conversations with the owners of Malto, and they've come to quite an understanding. Uh, about what they expect as landlords in this town. And their lease specifically requires that they follow all town rules, regulations, and codes. And they've expressed to them that if they do not follow that in the future, that uh, they will hold them in default on their lease. Um, but there's, there's been an understanding. Clearly, uh, as I stated in my write-up, um, my client is not only sorry for the actions that have happened, 
uh, but they, and they apologize to both this commission and we will be trying to do that before the Zoning Board of Appeals as well. Um, they thought uh, mistakenly that uh, they might be fined as they worked on trying to get smaller furniture in the space to be able to fit more, more occupants. Uh, they did not know about the app, uh, your last hearing, the enforcement action. They would have been here yeah. to explain their position. I, that, so in three, in three different places we, we've now heard they thought they would be fined and didn't know that you know we were taking up uh, action here uh, yes. with regard to that. I find that highly unpersuasive for them to say, well, we knew we weren't in compliance, but we only thought we'd get a, a fine. We didn't realize that there could be other consequences. That's not an excuse, and it really is unpersuasive. Well, Mr. Ryder, all I can say about that is they're trying to work to be into compliance. I understand your position. Well, the way to be in compliance would have been to move to where they knew they should have been and, you know, take some of the tables away. And that, that would have solved the problem and then come back to us with an application if they needed more space or for some exception to it. Um, so, I don't know, I just, I, I felt it appropriate to, to voice specifically with regard to that comment. Uh, it just struck me as being a little arrogant, frankly. I can speed on the highway because I'm just going to get a fine. It's not an excuse. All right, well, I think we just let Mr. Again, this is another not Mr. Walsh can continue to present <coughs> evidence. This is a tip, and again, it's an atypical thing. It's a compliance application. If the commission decides we want a public hearing on it, we can. That could be one decision. We can actually move a compliance application to public hearing. But we're just affording you the opportunity to present additional evidence. Again, this yeah. is a compliance application. We usually don't let attorneys address this. There is no additional evidence. There's just a letter from the attorney and from their uh, right. Well, well, I'd be happy if you just handed these out. Believe me, uh, you know, Attorney Fallon and many others would love the opportunity. To address the because the applicant's attorney wants to quite talk, you know, present his case to the, the, the commission. We should be allowed to. Now, if he wants to present his, we should we should notice a public hearing if we're going to do that. We don't typically afford attorneys an application, an opportunity to present during a compliance application. Here, because it was a it was a revocation, I said, yeah, come on up, give us some more evidence, and then we and we can um, we can decide. But here, we do have a new application. We can decide it. No, I understand, but uh, the gentleman from Sunny Days was just here, and he was more than happy to take our questions and comply with, you know, what we thought. Uh, again, there, there's there's a difference there, and this is not a public hearing. This is not a notice public hearing. I say, just Mr. Wallace, you, you know, I don't. We don't need to argue with Mr. Wallace or question Mr. Wallace. Just present the evidence. If we don't agree with it, we don't necessarily have to approve it. Okay. We can ask some questions, but. I just want to move this along. We, you know, this is a compliance application. We do, generally do not allow attorneys to present these to us. And we're affording them an opportunity, but I don't want to. I appreciate that, Mr. Barracks. Yes. Uh, you have a question? No, Mr. Suter has a question. I don't have a question. <laughs> I have uh, an observation. Um, this is not the first time that uh, Molto management has appeared to uh, either stretch or uh, perhaps even. Sure. It's not the first time the Molto management, uh, in my experience, has appeared to uh, stretch or perhaps even uh, evade our regulations. When we, they first established the uh, restaurant, they put up a sign uh, before we had even uh, time to consider uh, their signage uh, that was not in compliance with the plan for the arcade, of which uh, the restaurant was arguably a part. Um, I uh, recommended that we go ahead and approve it because it was tasteful and it appeared to uh, track with the nature of the restaurant, uh, but we could have denied it. Uh, so we granted them a, a, a bit of a, a favor on that, uh, in that situation. They also had installed speakers, outdoor loud speakers, over their patio and ran music for uh, a couple of weeks. And uh, uh, we had to mention to them that that was also not permitted by our regulations, so they stopped that. Now we have a situation where they've tried to stretch their outdoor uh, tables and seating um, and uh, I don't know if it was intentional or not. Uh, they say it was uh, simply a uh, misunderstanding. Uh, but I think that um, they should be on notice that uh, uh, we'll be watching their behavior in the future. Uh, I think I agree with your memo. I think they have learned a lesson. But uh, I think they need to be more careful in the future. Anything else, Mr. The, just the last piece of yes. the document I wanted to enter into the, and I don't have copies of it, but I will enter it with okay. the clerk if you want to yeah. take a look we at can it. Pass it around, around and enter with the clerk, which is just yeah. a petition that is uh, signed by 168 um, uh, owners of property um, and businesses, uh, neighbors, and customers of, of Molto in support of this application. 
Uh, so it's uh, about eight pages long. Uh, it's got 168 signatures on it, and these signatures were only really garnered over the last three days or so. So I'd just like to pass that, but okay. it's all in support of this application. Sure, you can start it down at this end, then we'll go to the staff and make it a file. Anything further, Mr. Walsh? No, I just appreciate your indulgence yeah. and would respectfully request that you grant the application. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, the item before us, this is a compliance application. It's a new compliance application because right now they don't have outdoor dining. Uh, so it's an application of Malta Wine and Bar, Wine Bar, to reestablish an outdoor dining area in the Center Design District. There is a plan in our packet that we would be uh, considering. Um, anything else from staff on this? Okay. And so I didn't mean to be different. This was not a notice public hearing. We are giving the, we are giving some people a chance to address us to present information. Um, we can move it to a public hearing. I mean, you, you, you can make any motion you want. We've had compliance applications go to public hearing. If you want to do that, you can move to approve. You can move to deny table. Um, we need a motion to discuss it. Can I ask yeah. staff a question? Yes, you can ask staff a um, question. Isn't it typical that the outdoor dining, what is the typical size? Do we have a typical size of uh, 150 square feet? or? I wouldn't say that we have a, uh, a, a typical size. Um, everyone is different. Um, their approval is, is for 12 by 23. It's not, uh, there are some that are larger than that. There are some that are smaller than that. It's usually driven by the parking requirements and what the waiver size is, if there is a waiver. Do we have a motion? I'll, I'll move to reestablish the outdoor dining as it is approved in our original. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Commissioner Parker. All right. And second by Commissioner Souter. Any discussion of the motion to reestablish the outdoor dining in Baldo according to this plan? Commissioner Lessie. We had a perfect case today where Sunny Days <clears throat> took down what they were told to do three, four days later, whatever it was, and then changed their site plan, came before us the right way, and asked for us to be approved. This gentleman, this applicant, has been told three times by staff and by the town to take it down. And buck the system every time until it was this commission that said, if you don't take it down, you're gonna lose your liquor license. And now that they were told that, we're presented with Mr. Walsh here, following the correct method of doing things, only after numerous times of them breaking the rules for our outdoor seating. I don't think that this application should be revisited until the spring. Anyone else wish to comment? It's okay. Appreciate everyone's comments. Okay, the motion is oh, 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 yes. Okay, Mr. Suda has another comment. Uh, I think they've. I mean, I know how popular the Malta restaurant is, and I, I'm sure that they have, as they have stated in their memo, uh, suffered a substantial financial and public relations penalty. Uh, on account of their uh, behavior. So I don't have a problem at this point of approving uh, the reestablishment of their outdoor dining privileges uh, for that reason. Yeah. I'll, okay, go ahead, Mr. Jacobs, then I'll I, I have just real serious problems with their actions. Um, I. I'm feeling that if we waited until spring to revisit it, it the, the application, uh, it would have some major effects on them. I'm not quite willing to do that. What I would say, though, is if we approve this tonight, we will be watching. And if they violate again, I would have no hesitant, hesitation to pull it and not revisit it. Um, there's a lot of restaurants that have what we call creep they're given their space and next week it's six inches more and following three weeks it's four inches more and they keep going and I don't think that can be tolerated and um, that if they violate what we have will if we approve this tonight and they violate it there will be a lot of commissioners and other people watching and it will be brought up Okay. Um, I oh, you go ahead, Mr. Wagner. You want to go last? I want to go. I, 
Everybody, Mr. Wagner, then Commissioner Jacobs. You know, I'll go now, and then you guys can go. Okay. <laughs> I think I said that. I just wanted to say that my opinion is that um, the outdoor dining. Mr. Walsh's letter was an excellent letter, by the way. That's why you know, I, didn't really, I thought it was a good letter. He explained it. Outdoor dining has been a huge positive to this town. And speaking to other towns, it it. it it's been great. Part of it's the actions of our commission. Part of it's just, you know, some really good property owners uh, and uh, attracting some great tenants. So um, it's been tremendously positive. The issue I have, you know, here was not necessarily with the outdoor dining. And again, this was a ZBA action. I don't even have the evidence that was presented there to say why they approved it or denied it. My issue was that a, a uh, you know, a decision had been made and they ignore the decision and and that's what just bothers me we just cannot have that in this town once we have people deciding which regulations are going to abide by and which not and which which of our actions they're going to comply with and which not we'll have uh, chaos and that's what we cannot have um so and, and also you know it's unfair to other people as successful as malto is people that go out to look for out there dining if they can't go there they'll go someplace and by them extending their seating could hurt other businesses. I know they have 160 businesses approving it, but there, there's other residents that have outdoor dining that play by the rules that really um, need to be treated fairly. So in some ways, I'm inclined to uh, go with what Mr. Alessi said. In other ways, I think may temper it back to what Mr. Jacob said. Look, we already approved this. It, it was successful. It's a great restaurant. People like it. Um, you know, but let's not let it happen again. And Mr. Wagner, then Mr. Jacobs. Thanks. Commissioner Jacobs. Well, you, you actually, you, you touched upon the, the point I wanted to make. Um, you know, I made the point before about the, the fine. You know, if, if everybody in town just simply said, well, you know, I'm going to break the rule because I really I only think I'm going to get a fine and I'll pay the fine and I'm making more money, you know, I'll, I'll come out ahead on the, at, the, at the end of the game, then, then everybody breaks the rules and it's no good for anybody. The other thing you got to consider here is that the other restaurants that have these approvals play by the rules. And it's unfair to all of the other restaurants in town that would love an extra table or two. You know, the, the, the statement of, uh, um, uh, uh, of use that was submitted by Attorney Walsh commented that uh, now that the tables have been removed, that uh, there is an impact of 35% on the restaurant's business. And you know what? The applicant could very well have avoided that entirely by simply taking the two or three tables that they were over and restricting their use to that which was allowed. And frankly, there are a lot of restaurants in town that would love to have an extra couple of tables. So it's really problematic to have the kinds of uh, uh, um, uh, actions and reactions that are at play in this application and, and in this recent history. However, I recognize that for a restaurant like Malto in town, this could have a devastating effect. And we certainly want to do, we, we don't want to take actions that are going to harm the economic uh, uh, realities of, of, of our town and, and, and the commerce and so forth. So I'm disinclined to deny this outright and wait until next spring for that reason. But delaying our approval would have an impact on the applicant. And so I'm going to suggest that we grant the application with an effective date of September 1st so that there will be an additional two-week period that the applicant will not be able to use as outdoor seating. And that will hopefully be a sufficient deterrent for this applicant and will send a message to others that we won't tolerate this kind of behavior. So I put that out there for discussion. Thank you. I'll just let Mr. Commissioner Jacobson speak Thank next, you. and then um, we can talk. And if you want to address that, or we can maybe amend the motion later. But you wanted to speak next. I'm just going to I would support reinstating the license and then having it start again on September 1st. I think that's a really good idea. Um, it sets a precedent. I mean, and it shows people that we're serious and that you have to follow the rules. So I would support that motion because I know that people have lost their jobs and it has had an economic effect. So I think that's a fair resolution. Anyone else wish to yeah. yes, Mr. I Speaker. think I agree with uh, Commissioner Wagner and uh, uh, Commissioner Jacobson's support. I think September 1st is a, is a good deterrent. I'll support September 1st as well. Okay. 
Commissioner Parker, you originally made the motion. I will Would you alter. amend the motion to, with, you know, just reestablish the outdoor dining with an effective of date of September, September 1st? 1st? I will do that. It's made, and who seconded? Mr. Suda, you seconded it? I think that's a second. rather large fine, but I will. We can certainly discuss it. We've got yeah. an amended motion now. Would you like yeah. to discuss the um, amended no. motion? Let's, I'll amend the um, it, it, motion to September 1st. Yes, Commissioner Wagner. Listen, I, you know, if, if there is um, sentiment among the other commissioners that September 1st is not an appropriate date, that it should be something earlier than that or later than that. I mean, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. I'm trying to find the appropriate balance between sending the right message and not hurting the, you know, finding the right balance. So September 1st is right before the Labor Day, the long weekend, the Labor Day uh, weekend. Um, and what day of the week does that fall on? Saturday. Friday. Oh. Saturday. That's a Saturday? That's a Saturday. So yeah. maybe, maybe that, you know, we could say September 29th. August 29th. Uh, August 29th, which would be a Wednesday. So the first day that they could uh, reopen would be the Thursday, the 30th. That might have a, you know. I, I put it out there for discussion, yeah. not for everybody yeah, to I, simply jump on. I agree. I don't. I. It's. You know, it's. It's a unique action because it's punitive. Normally, that's not what we do. We approve things. We deny things. We make conditions that we think to make the project better or protect the public. Um, just to let you know, to we don't have to recertify this at all, and we you know it could go to next year. That would be one form of being punitive. Another one would be to go to September first or day. It is. Uh, it's not something we normally take as hard to weigh because it's not something we normally do. Um, so um, I agree. Just something. There's you want to send some message that actions of the <coughs> actions of any land use board are not to be. Uh, is that going to be a precedent ignored. for future establishments? No, I don't think. Well, for future no, establishments no, no. that ignore our regulations. <laughs> no, no, yes, we set right. precedent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and we, we we are we are acting on an application to reinstate a, an approval which we revoked because of their, uh, you know, recent behavior. Right. And, you know, I, I can't express enough how unpersuasive it was to see three different times that the applicant knew they were not in compliance and didn't comply because they only thought that they would be fine. I, that just rubs me the wrong way, and so yeah, I know. I it just it's it's not appropriate, and so um, anyway, I've said my piece. Um, you know, I'll I'll revise my um, my suggestion to August 29th to that Thursday before the holiday weekend. Oh, that would be August 30th. August 30th. August 29th. Okay. You're willing to revise your? I will revise the motion to August 30th. August okay. 30th or 29th? What was your? Week? 30th. So the, the, the 30th. The, the 30th. The effect of the 30th. Okay. Right. You know. Okay. What do you want? Right. I, I put it out there for discussion. I just think if we do something like that, it's a precedent for other restaurants in the future. Right. And I think it co that causes more more headaches. I really do. What? To make it August 29th? You know, if we say August 29th and next year we have two or three restaurants that do the same thing and then they expect they're going to get their seating back August 29th because it's been done yeah. for Malto. I just think, you know, thinking about it, it's going to cause a bad precedent for other establishments. So you, you would prefer to just say September 1 and just it's... Well, it's, well I, don't, I don't think there's don't any know. difference I'm, between the number of days. No, I mean, you just, want to... Not, you know, I, mean, I don't know. I think we should just, revi you know... Listen, I don't want to see Malto. A, it's a great place. It's, it's popular. People love it. And I don't want to see them get hurt. But in the meantime, well, I don't, I don't want other restaurants people. to do the same thing that they've done and right. say, all right, you know, if they I shut me down for two weeks, I'll still be, you know, I'll, be get, I'll get it back in two weeks. I think, I think we should establish, yeah. I still am going to go with my original thinking that we should revisit this in the spring. Okay, that's fair enough. I, I do understand your point, but we've, we've taken one action to revoke it. People see that, but if, if they see that, yeah, they'll revoke it, but then I'll get it back I'll in get two it back. weeks. I'll come back in the next Wednesday you know, yeah. Yeah. Night. You know, I'll, I'll apply, you know, I'm going to go before the, the right. town. You know, the planning and zoning two yep. weeks from now, and I'm going to see if I can get it back. The other, the other thing I would say is that all of the outdoor dining in town is subject to annual recertification. So no matter what action we take next February or April or March, whatever date that is, Mr. Wentz is going to have a list of all the dining establishments and what they have and what they did. And on any of them, if they've somehow, if there's been issues there, we always ask. Uh, any of them can be revoked any year. No, I understand that, but I, that's why I said I would be considering this. Right? Yeah. Um, 
any other discussion? Yeah, I would just say I think we uh, address every situation on a case-by-case -case basis. I don't think we're really setting a precedent here. Uh, we, uh, we have the facts in this situation, and the facts next time for a different restaurant may be different, but I think we're sending out loud and clear message to other restaurants in town that we're serious about our regulations, and that's what counts here. I, th I, I mean, I think this is a little harsh, too, but I, I, would, I don't know how to word this into what, what Mr. Jacobs said, if we could somehow adapt that. that I'll say it in English, maybe you could formulate it into a condition of approval, that if they don't comply with, this, with what's approved, any, anything, this is, so, this is going away. I mean, they can apply again, but I mean, it won't even be on the uh, an, annual list. It'll be, I mean, it'll be permanently revoked from this owner. I think that would be, if there was any way to do that, I think that's, that's a, a good message. I mean, we're just not gonna tolerate any, any transgression, to use the word in, in Mr. Walsh's letter. If there's somehow we could put there, I mean, there, that, that's it. Maybe that's harsh too, but. You know, I know that if Mr. Alessi drives by there and he sees unapproved juices, I'm not he's going to be <laughs> taking the wrong commission to okay. it. Somebody's going to be taking photographs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is going to, I mean, I just want yeah, to read anybody who's listening know that this gets watched pretty closely. So, so I'll say one more thing and then, I'll, and then I'll, I'll upset my piece. You know, the other thing I'm thinking about is that people work there, okay? And, you know, there are, there are folks in town for whom our actions are going to have consequences, not just the owner of this establishment or the Klebans who potentially will declare them in default under their lease or something like that, okay? So I would be, I'm, revise, I'm revising my suggestion okay. <laughs> to have this be effective on the 30th, and I would support the condition that if they were not in compliance in the future, that their, uh, that their uh, approval be revoked permanently. And I've said my piece. Mr. Jacobs? Yeah, I, I just want to uh, actually ask staff uh, a question on this. Is it possible that there could be some type of a mark made on the corner piece on the sidewalk so when you walk by, you know if it's in the right place or not? Um, it's already effectively marked. I mean, they, they, there's brick pavers that if they're closer to the street than the brick pavers, they're okay. beyond their territory. And there's right. a pillar at the end of where the line up trek the space is. If they're beyond that pillar, then they're beyond their space. So that the, the space is effectively demarcated already. Thank you. All right, I'll revise the motion to reestablish outdoor dining as of August 30th. And a condition to permanently revoke it. And a condition any. to permanently revoke if there's a violation. Yeah. I don't know that that, I mean, that's at your discretion at, at any point. So I don't know that you need necessarily make that a condition of approval. It's a subject it's to good. annual it's recertification good. anyway. It is. I know. It's good. It's as good if the words are in there. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's a threat. I mean, some of this, we're not usually into threats and punitive measures, but that's what, that's what these, these conditions really are. I mean, in effect. They're asking for okay. what we've already approved and what we're already happy with. Um, you know, it's a, but, but yet we're, you know. Shall I remove the condition? No, I don't think so. I, I, That's I, it. I, I like the condition. Okay. Do you, you want it? You got it. It's fine with me. You okay with that? Yep. I know Mr. Leslie doesn't care what condition is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, listen, is, how many restaurants are in town that everybody buys by the rules? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, everybody, like Commissioner Wagner says, everybody wants one or two tables okay. more. Okay. It's not like we all don't go to these restaurants. We all go to these restaurants. Yeah. We all spend money downtown. We all love downtown. Yeah. But, you know, it's not fair to other restaurants in town. Okay, so okay. the motion's been amended, Made seconded. Are right, we have any further discussion on this? Jerry, second. <laughs> sure, I'll suck. Okay. <laughs> no, I think it was seconded by Mr. Souter already. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did. <laughs> we don't want to. Okay. Any further discussion to re re uh, certify the outdoor dining subject to the conditions? Are we ready to vote? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Mr. Lessie is opposed. Six to one. We're done. We're ready to go to a public hearing. Maybe you take a couple minute break to reconfigure and then we can start up. <laughs>
This is the August 14th, 2012 public hearing of the Fairfield Town Planning and Zoning Commission. We have two items on our agenda tonight. The first item is a resubdivision, 5092 Chatham Road, resubdivision uh, application of 50 Development LLC and Patricia Sheehy for three lots in an R3 zone. Um, this matter has been um, continued from several nights. Uh, it says here June 26th and July 24th, and I believe there was one before the June 26th as well, maybe? There was, there was another one. We've heard this three times. I, I can't remember the other date. So uh, I know this is the fourth night. At the last meeting, which on July 24th, the applicant presented a grading and contour plan, which was missing from the original application. We held it open so that he could present that. At that meeting, one of the residents said they wanted an opportunity to review it and ask questions. So tonight's meeting will open up with asking if any member of the public wishes to comment specifically on the grading and contour plan that was handed out on July 24th. After that, the applicant will have a chance to rebut anything that was said, not present any new evidence, uh, and make a closing remark, and then we're done with the hearing. We will close the hearing. Does anybody wish, any member of the public wish to comment on the grading and contour plan? Hearing none, Mr. Walsh? He can be done. He, I, I still, no. He can, he can, he doesn't have to rebut, he can make a close, I don't know if you finished. Do you have anything, any closing comments? Uh, we, I really don't at this point in time. Um, we uh, presented all our evidence. I did have a chance to, to summarize that. We were here specifically this evening in regard to the contour plan, which um, was basically revised. We did originally prepare a contour plan, but it was specifically on the lot. Your regulations uh, require that they go 50 feet onto adjoining lots. Mm -hmm. We prepared that. The neighbors wanted to see it again, um, to have two weeks to or three weeks to review it at this point in time, and they didn't. Um, our re our subdiv resubdivision plan um, meets all the requirements of your subdivision regulations, all of them. Um, we've gone through great lengths and number of hearings to make sure that that was the case. Uh, I think we presented all the evidence we need to, and pursuant to your regulations, if we do meet all of those requirements, um, this commission must approve the plan. So I respectfully request, uh, now that the hearing is closed, that you approve our subdivision, resubdivision plan. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. And I will close the hearing. The next item on our agenda is a special exception, 355 Pine Creek Avenue, special exception application of Scott and Jennifer Malik pertaining to construction of a garage in a floodplain district. Mr. Good evening, Mr. Fallon. Chairman. Uh, for the record, I'm John Fallon. I'm pleased to be here uh, with you all tonight. Very interesting meeting uh, with me. <laughs> but you know, I love this stuff. What can I tell you? Uh, with me is Mr. Mark Andre, who's the architect uh, of the garage, which is the subject of the hearing, and Scott Malik, uh, uh, one of the applicants and owner of the property. Uh, this, I'll be brief, I have some material to hand out and then we'll answer any questions you might have. Property is located at 355 Pine Creek Avenue. It's located in the floodplain district, section 23 of your regulations, which is of course what brings us before you because due to the fact that we are on the floodplain, this structure <coughs> requires special exception approval in accordance with section 23.6 of the regulations. Uh, what the application is about, and certainly Mr. Andre can answer any questions you would have about the elevations, uh, is an approval to construct a new garage on the property to be used in conjunction with the Malik single family residence. Uh, the new garage, if you've been out to the site, as I know in your diligence you probably have, is going to replace an existing uh, dilapidated uh, garage structure that's on the property. Uh, this construction uh, of this proposed garage that's before you tonight was approved earlier this year by the Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, which issued a permit granting approval for the construction of this structure. I want to provide you with a copy of that. And I think that's important uh, for two reasons. Number one, this was an exhaustive review by DEP, as DEP reviews generally are. And as you can see, the findings uh, were comprehensive and the approval uh, was uh, unequivocal. The second reason I think it's very important is the DEP's approval is relevant to your standards, which requires that you uh, find that a structure of this type 
being constructed in the floodplain uh, meets the standards of the floodplain district. And a lot of those standards are certainly mirrored in the DEP standards that apply here. And so that the fact that the DEP issued this permit, I think, is very relevant to these proceedings. Uh, it's interesting here that in terms of we also had a, a zoning board of appeals uh, application, which was granted. I'm going to provide you a copy of that. That was granted unanimously uh, by the Zoning Board of Appeals in May of this year. What they did was they granted two variances. They granted a variance allowing this structure uh, to be set back 24 feet rather than 30 feet from the street. In doing that, they were cognizant of the fact that the existing structure that's there now is also non-conforming to the street setback. They also granted a coverage variance with regard to the new garage, and they did that because they found, and the record indicated, that we are actually reducing coverage. The existing garage has a coverage percentage of 21%. The new garage, as you'll see with this, has a coverage percentage of 19.6%. And this was all reviewed prior to your review tonight, as I said, <coughs> and approved unanimously by the CDA as part of that public hearing presentation, the Malik's also um, reviewed the application uh, with their their neighbors. Uh, they submitted to the CDA at that time, and this is part of your record as well, a petition uh, that confirmed that the neighbors, as noted on this petition, who generally represent the people in any reasonable proximity, uh, had reviewed the plans that were before ZBA and are before you tonight and uh, express no objections uh, to the application. I think they did that in large part because there was a finding made as a practical matter by the neighbors that this new garage, beautifully designed by Mr. Andre is going to benefit the neighborhood in that it's going to, it certainly is attractive in its design and does, in the neighbor's mind, and certainly the Malik's represent a, a, a significant aesthetic enhancement to the property. So by way of summary, uh, as I said, we're looking to tear down an existing dilapidated garage that does not meet the floodplain district regulations in terms of flood protection. We're looking to replace it with this structure we have discussed it with our neighbors. It's been reviewed over about an 18-month period by the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. It's issued a permit. It warrants your approval. We hope you'll agree because yeah, the structure is consistent with the construction requirements of the floodplain district set forth in section 23 and 32 of the regulations involving flood protection. And as I said before, in terms of the purpose of the floodplain district and the flood protection regulations, this existing structure does not meet those standards. So I think it's a win-win, not only for the Mallets, who will gain an attractive new garage, for the neighborhood, uh, who will have something aesthetically better to look at, but for the purpose and intent of your regulations, because this is what you look for when replacing structures in the floodplain. And that's why, as I said, I think the DEP review and extensive permit is very relevant. So uh, Mr. Mallet, or uh, Mr. Andre or myself would be pleased to answer any other questions you might have. Um, otherwise, we would ask for your approval pursuant to Section 23.6 of the regulations. Okay, questions for the Commission? Mr. Mr. Alessi. Mr. Fallon, you're bringing any utilities into the building, I guess, besides electricity? Mr. Andre, can you address that, please? Uh, yes, there is existing uh, utilities on the premises, so uh, with water. Yeah. Um, I, I think there is Any, um, uh, in the garage, so, um. the, the, uh, the ZBA variance approval is conditioned upon no bathroom facilities. Correct. Right. Uh, yeah, that was never proposed with the uh, same thing with uh, the local board. And that can certainly be a condition of your approval as well. Or something redundant. It's probably good to have it as part of the special acceptance. 
but if this is purely a garage, there's no facilities for cooking, sleeping, or bathing. And that, that is certainly a provision of the ZBA approval, and we welcome it as a provision of yours. And also, no way the design it would not be practical to have us uh, sleeping in quarters in the uh, storage area. Testify to his wife. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, in fact, that's a, on the plan. It's it's specifically stated that the second floor is storage yes. area. Correct, and that and that's really the the need. The Malik's have not owned this property that long. Well. And they perceive the need for some storage, and that's what this will address. And I think it does so in a very attractive manner. Other questions from the commission for the applicant, Mr. Jacobs. Could you go over the uh, the uh, height of the slab above uh, the uh, high tide want mark? The elevation of the slab above the high tide mark. Elevation of the slab. I assume that you've got a solid foundation coming up from the slab around it. Uh, sure. uh, now, wh what do you do when waves come through? Okay. So you're going to have the ability for the water to go through it. Yes. Okay. So you, you've got some, what, how, how are you going to make those? Are they going to be like a wooden area that'll break free when the flood water hits? Anything further from the commission? Any questions? Further questions for the applicant? Okay. Uh, would anyone from the public wish to comment on this matter, 355 Pine Creek Avenue? No. Anything further, Mr. Fallon? No, unless you have other questions, we thank you for your attention. Apparently, we don't, and we will close the hearing. Okay. That that concludes the uh, public hearing portion of our meeting tonight. Um, we um, continued the uh, Chatham Road application to tonight. Uh, you know, we, we had talked about maybe deciding it tonight. I, I would entertain any motions to return to executive session if somebody wants to decide the Chatham Road uh, application tonight. We've, I mean, we've really had, we've reviewed it for three, three different meetings. I said that, that being said, if there's no motion to go into executive session, then we stand in adjournment. But that is, um, we uh, I believe our uh, Chairman Leclerc, uh, he spent some time listening to the tapes. I think he would want to vote on this application. He I, I spoke with him today. He said it's okay. Uh, the key thing would be we have to have seven people. We have to be aware of, all, I know we heard it three times before today. We have to know what those three dates were and that we have seven people present that have heard all three. If we don't have that, then we would, would not. But I just say that the applicant's here. He's got people here. The public is here. Um, you know, perhaps as a courtesy to them, there's nothing we heard. We didn't hear anything tonight. So um, we should be ready to decide this tonight. That's my view. And Mr. LeClaire is perfectly fine if we go ahead. Uh, again, with the provision that we need seven people that have heard every time this was here. So do we have a motion to go back into executive session? Or you have a comment? I, 
I know I was there all four nights. Mr. Alessi was, Mr. Parker was, Commissioner Neely was, Mr. Jacobs. Uh, I believe that I missed one, but I saw the... Uh, right, you, you watched the... Watched yeah, the I, I believe the dates were June 26th, July 10th, July 24th, and tonight. My, yeah, I think one is missing in the notice in the agenda. You are correct, June 26th. And July, I, July 10th. And July 24th. Mr. Wagner, were you at all five of them? Yes. All four of them? You were too. Unless somebody remembers something I don't. No. I'm pretty sure that it was the only meeting that I missed was St. Vincent's meeting. Which right. Was only St. Right. Vincent's. Which was only St. Vincent's. Right. There was one meeting that Mr. Leclerc, Leclerc presided over, a second one I did, and then the last time we just held it open. All they did was present the grading and contour plan. Took a few minutes. The, uh, the, um, the, Today we left it open for that. So really, if you remember, the two main meetings were one Mr. LeClaire presided, one I did, um, and we'd do it. Were you at all of them? Yes, I was. Were you at all of them, Mr. Souter? Yes. So everybody, everybody was at all of them. So. Make a motion to go into session. You can. You, he just did. Okay, motion. Thank you, Mr. Alessio. <laughs> any, would it be seconded by anybody? Second by Commissioner Parker. I apologize, Commissioner Neely, again. It's, it will explain the luck of the draw. Since she wasn't on tonight, then it's the seven of us decided because everybody else was here for all those times. That's still correct? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, Commissioner Neely, all eight of us were at all four meetings, so everybody can vote. Uh, we, except we only, we're only allowed to have seven members deliberate and vote, so that's what it is. Okay. So we had a motion to go in second section, seconded. Did, it, did we vote on this yet? Uh, He's got to change the tape. Okay. You're correct about the July 10th. Yeah. yeah I, I spent enough time on this application to know it was, <laughs> this is the fourth night it's been on the agenda. Okay. I don't really photograph well. Not really. Let me charge extra for phone. Okay. I can't remember. Mr. Alessi made it and Commissioner Parker seconded it. When the alternates get a chance to, they're, they're very good about making motions over there when they can. <laughs> and, I, and I do appreciate that, moving things along. Okay. Um, so the motions are made and seconded to go into executive session. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No one is opposed. Okay. Um, the ma again, the Pine Creek matter was new. Since this is an older matter, we're going to consider it. It's... Um, 5092 Chatham Road, resubdivision application of 50 development LLC and Patricia G for three lots in an R3 zone. And we heard this on June 26th, July 10th, July 24th, and concluded it tonight. Do we need a um, overview from the staff? Or are we ready to discuss this? this? It'd be nice to have a brief review by staff, I think. If they want to are you ready to give a brief review? I Some people may not have looked at this for a while. You have any, any, I mean, you don't have to. It's a, you know, we have all the information. I think we're pretty familiar with the facts. Just a quick refresher of what the application was. I don't have a whole lot to say you you there's been a whole lot said already so um, I, th I think the 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 two main areas of concern that have been raised primarily are those of um, traffic and sight lines for the driveway it, driveways plural and um, you know the drainage in, in grading so those were the two main areas of focus that you have comments from the applicants experts and from the public and from the town there was some concern about um, the driveway sight line in particular <coughs> for lot one 
um, you know, is outlined in the applicant's traffic uh, traffic report. Okay. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to deny 1592 Chatham Road subdivision. Motion to deny by Commissioner Alessi, second by Commissioner Parker. You may lead it off, Mr. Alessi, if you so choose. Oh. <laughs> sure. Well, after looking at this site many times, um, I think that the new foundations will cause a greater unknown in the rock fracturing due to the new, uh, the new basements that can be dug. I feel that the decks where the residents that live next door already have a hazardous problem, and we're going to make it even more dangerous for their family, as well as the neighbors on the back of the property. Um, the applicant had stated that the rock is already shale and soft, and I don't understand how causing any more fracturing to the rock is going to make it any more stable or cause any more uh, new waterways for the water escape in the property besides the people behind them and on the sides. Um, the wall that was proposed and submitted on the plans on the side, as far as I'm concerned, after looking at them closely, it doesn't show enough detail. And I think over time there's going to be a settling problem for that wall too. We heard that it was going to be drilled into the rock, but we haven't seen any plans uh, thereof. Um, we already have a serious issue as far as rain goes that was shown the other day with the storms that we had. And I don't think that these three houses are going to help that situation, even with the new proposed drainage that is being presented. Also, taking into consideration that the house... 92 Chatham Road was already made into a larger house and it's empty at this point. We're going to be seeing more traffic on that block as well as these three additional houses. And as far as 27.4.1 uh, of our regulations, I really don't believe that this new subdivision harmonizes with the neighborhood and the surrounding area and causes detriment to the neighbors behind it. Thank you. Commissioner Parker. I agree with my colleague on all those points. On Friday, I uh, drove to the uh, property during the storm. Um, there was a lot of water flow coming into the junction of uh, Chatham and um, uh, Random Road. But I, in addition to that, I drove down onto Flushing and almost got swamped on the street. It was the first time I've ever driven into water and felt I shouldn't have done this, and I almost backed out. The flooding on Flushing Street is horrendous, and I'm not sure by enlarging the pipe a little bit that the, the uh, solution will uh, work. And uh, in addition to that, I think that in terms of uh, what the developers here are proposing, I think although they have the square footage necessary to meet our requirements, a good portion of that square footage is not usable space. And so on the usable space, they're crowding three houses that uh, just seems inappropriate to the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Parker. Anyone else wish to comment? Yes. Mr. Souter. We share. Better, better than people not being able to hear. Need two more microphones. Um, my main concern with this application has to do with the sight lines from the uh, uh, location. There are three lots uh, that are stretched across uh, this one straight piece of road, uh, lots one, two, and three. Uh, the traffic report uh, finds uh, sight line problems to uh, the west on both lots one and two, and in particular lot one, which is the one closest to the uh, downhill slope going down to uh, passing 16 Chatham and to the intersection there with Random Road. Um, uh, there, there's a very short sight line. Uh, it's only about 130 feet, uh, and that I think is from the existing driveway. I have visited the site and parked my car in the existing driveway. It's a very short sight line even from the existing site driveway, which is slightly to the east of uh, the proposed driveway. So the sight line from the proposed new driveway would be driveway would be even less. Um, Mr. Galante has argued that cars would only come up uh, the street from uh, the west going eastbound at 15 miles an hour. Uh, my own experience is that they could easily travel 18 to 25 miles an hour, and in fact the recorded speed was 22 miles an hour. He didn't give any sight line distance for 22 miles an hour, but the town standard for 25 miles an hour is 225 feet. 
Uh, so I don't think by any measure that a uh, lot one can qualify as a safe, buildable lot for a house, and therefore the application should be denied. Thank you. Commissioner Jacobson. I have visited the site twice on both sides, and I agree with all the comments of my colleagues and the sight lines. I did go during the flood on Friday, and it, was, it is very dangerous, so I, I can't support this application. Thank you. Mr. Jacobs, you have something? Yeah. Um, some of my other concerns, is this, an, not a, is this a different thing? Not this one. Sure. Maybe that way. One day we might get a mic system that works. Um, one of my other concerns was when we try to question some of the findings of the engineer and ask if she did a site visit, she wouldn't come before us, she didn't do a site visit, there was emails. I don't feel that we got uh, a, a real accurate uh, uh, information on that site. Um, I have real concerns of the flooding and off, off the back over that what I would call a cliff um, and to the side uh, going down the hill. So I would not be supporting this application. I, w I would not support the application either, but maybe for some different reasons. I thought that the drainage issues and the testimony by members of the public were very credible. However, that's the current conditions. The applicant presented a, you know, a, a plan of improvements and, yeah, through various emails and, uh, and things that we didn't really get app, you know, enough maybe opportunity to question. Our, our town engineer also said that the post-development flows would be less than the pre-development flows. I would just caution the commission that that's, a, that's very difficult when we're substituting our judgment for uh, you know, based on neighbors' testimonies of what current conditions are versus what the plans will do. I understand their fears. I would share them if, if, if I were them and whether everything will work. However, um, you know, given some of the new technology and the stormwater detention, it's hard to say that it won't. So I personally would not oppose this for drainage reasons. However, for sight lines, I would. Um, the applicant's own, and, and one other reason, the traffic, applicant's own repa traffic report states that the sight lines in a couple cases do not meet the town regulations. There's two types of sight distances. One is, and this is in the applicant's traffic report, matter of the record. One is intersection sight distance. That is um, different from stopping sign distance. Intersection sight distance is the available distance that allows the driver um, sight distance and intersection quadrants. Um, the conclusion in the applicant's traffic report is two of the site distances for intersection site distance do not meet the town regulations due to the alignment of roadway, and then one of them does not meet the, uh, the uh, town regulations. The stopping site distance, again, one lot seems to be the problem based on the applicant's traffic report. You have 130 one way, 135 another. Again, there was a little, the applicant pointed out, dialogue with uh, Laura Pooley, our town engineer, who did state to the applicant that um, you know, it doesn't help you is you only have 135 square feet. The applicant has never said that they have more than 135 stopping site distance. They said, well, um, you know, but people go slow on that roadway. Stopping site distance includes how fast people go on the roadway. It's based measured a specific speed limit. Um, there's grading. No matter how you do it, they don't achieve that with the three lots. Um, you know, I mean, I think if they had two lots, they'd be able to cite the driveways. It's not our job to cite the driveways. The plan presented to us does not provide accurate site distances. Site distance are a valid reason for denial, um, I believe, that uh, safe ingress and egress from the property needs to be achieved, and it's not. Um, the second reason I would deny it, again, maybe this is uh, my own issue, is that Mr. Jacobs and some of us put in an application about the lot area and shape. And it says, the area of the minimum square required on each lot shall be exclusive of wetlands, watercourses, conservation easements, or any, any other restriction, I put the two any's in, other than setbacks, which would prevent actual house construction within the square. Now it's achieved this tremendous drainage. They've built elaborate stormwater detention systems, which are in the square on two of the properties. And when I questioned Mr. Baturla, who is their hired engineer on that, I wrote down what he said. He said, in no case would you want the stormwater retention under the house. These things have manhole covers. The square of the house, the 80-foot square, which is required, this is a technical requirement, 
is on top of that. So it does not comply. You're dealing with an application that is nine feet over uh, the requirements for three properties. One of them, as I pointed out, is 14,000 square feet. One inch less, if they surveying is off by one inch, it doesn't comply. Um, when dealing with that, these other dimensions do come into play. That was the purpose of putting this in, is that not just you wouldn't have odd shaped lots, so you wouldn't, so it would truly be a buildable 80 square foot square. I think you actually wrote that section, Mr. Mr. Jacobs, and I would commend you. We all did, had some input, but I think that, that was actually yours. This isn't some ancient writing of a commission long ago. This was approved in February of 2009. So I would also deny it for that reason. Uh, that's it. And, uh, Mr. Wagner. I, I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. you, you're saying that the, the installation of the detention the system in the square is a violation of that. Right, because it's a restriction that would prevent house construction within the square. That's right. These are detention, large, elaborate detention systems with manhole covers. And Mr. Baturla said, in no case would you build a house on it. I remember that testimony pretty well, and, and the, the question was um, for those areas in which these systems are built, and it's not just a matter of, of drainage or systems generally, but you were asking him about the specific areas around the wall and where these de the actual detention of the water is, and the question was, is that buildable area on the lot would could you build a house on that and his answer was no and so I mean I, I would agree that the space on the lot um, you know when taken in consideration with the uh, with the testimony and the and the plans um, don't comply with our regulations I also have an issue with the sight lines um, and I, I, so I agree with Commissioner Barrett's um, the comment about um, the sight lines from the applicant was a little bit um, contradictory for me. Um, the argument was that, well, people drive slowly on that street, but the traffic report actually reported um, measured speed, and so we have that in the report, and the report specifically recites the sight lines that are required and concludes that they are insufficient. And therefore, the uh, the proposal is not safe, and so for that reason, I would uh, also not support this application. Anyone else? Any further comments? No. Okay, we have a motion to deny. It's motion been, is to deny. Motion is to deny. Yes, yeah, to we'll make sure we get get that correctly. So, an affirmative vote is to deny the application. That's correct. It's been made and seconded. Any other comments? Are we ready to vote? All in favor of the motion to deny signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No one is opposed. It is denied unanimously. And we are in adjournment. I don't need a motion for that. No, I don't think.